one that always sticks in my mind is when uh, a family put, uh, if I remember rightly, their mum into a care home coming up to Christmas for respite mm -hmm. because the, her main care, her husband had to go into hospital for surgery. So he'd been looking after her for two or three years. She had high care needs, goes into respite into a facility for two days and dies within, um, has an injury that's not recognised, has a fall that's not recognised mm. um, and dies within sort of four days. And you sort of think that, but yeah, the, the irony about um, you're putting someone who you're expecting professional level of support and they would have been better off home but they couldn't be at home because the person providing the care needed their own medical care and then you wonder um, what sort of society have we got structured that um, to end up in, in that sort of situation and you know the family didn't want to go to care she didn't want to go to care everyone that was at the facility were confident they could look after her and so everyone had fabulous intentions and it comes down to a screaming mess and someone dies who you know wouldn't have um, if circumstances were different if the facility had listened to the family about what the care needs the specific care needs were um, what the nuances about um, visual cues or facial expressions or how that person behaves and if that had been handed over and discussed and so it's all the little simple gaps not the dramatic stuff that really sticks um, in my mind um, the other one that, that I thought was really very was the father called his daughter saying she wasn't well and couldn't get help she was an hour away she so she arrived to see her dad before he got help in the facility and she had to travel the hour and there were people on site he couldn't access help for it it just doesn't all that doesn't make sense mm. um, and isn't um, why we we work uh, or are in the field the third one is a, a person who'd had a stroke and couldn't lift her hand to smoke a cigarette so had to swoop down to to get the cigarette cigarette falls out of her hand um, burns her clothing dies and and it's and that that's remarkable in just, just how desperate people are to smoke and how um, we're not we're not actively thinking about what the risks are in that situation and it, it it's always easy in retrospect and you think what were you thinking to be able to leave a person alone who needs that degree of help mm. that something bad wasn't going to happen um, and I think it's it's those little things and the theme that keeps re-emerging is that particularly with clinical staff so more the, the doctors and nurses not listening to the family when a person has changed yes. and so that that and so professionally that sticks with me and I try to remember that when I'm working that just because I can't see a difference in a patient or resident doesn't mean that they're not different and I've only known them for a short time and their family have known them a lifetime and so they're looking for subtle changes that we don't see and time and again we don't pay attention because we think that we're the ones with the professional qualifications and we know what to do and I think that's probably the the biggest message that comes through and I think the greatest frustration for families about I knew something was wrong I didn't know what because I'm not medically trained the doctor said everything was fine and it wasn't